Thanks for checking out this show review video. So this is for the show of what we do in the shadows. It started in 2019, it's on FX. And because it's on FX and FX has a good relationship, well, a special relationship with Hulu, it is available for streaming on Hulu right now. So you can catch it on FX or you can catch it on Hulu, either way you want to do it. So there are two seasons thus far of the show and both full seasons are on Hulu at the moment, which is where I watched it. From what I do know, I believe there's been a third season confirmed to be coming because it is popular enough. Although, unfortunately, one of the main writers has left the writing room. Uh, I don't know if that means they're still, still going to be involved in producing. I assume so. And that's Jermaine Clement. So if people remember who Jermaine Clement is, and if you don't, well, I mean more if you don't remember who he is, he was involved in the writing and the acting of the first one, I think directing as well, of the actual movie, What We Do in the Shadows. He also got his start and his first bit of fame from Flight of the Concord show. So if you see him, you'll know him if you're not familiar with the name. But uh, also working on the show and worked on the movie was Taika Waititi, which a lot of people know him from uh, doing Thor Ragnarok, directing that and doing the voice of Korg for the Marvel movies. So he's become a lot bigger. So I was kind of surprised to see, not not necessarily Jermaine Clement still involved with the show, but Taika Waititi certainly. So I guess it's kind of like a passion project. So those two are still producers on it, and I don't know if Taika Waititi is still involved in the writing of it. I believe he is, uh, but Jermaine Clement had been for the two seasons, and now apparently, according to an article I saw, he's leaving the writing room. So... I don't know if that's going to have an impact on the quality of the show, but I will stick around to find out because I think this is a good show. Uh, I'm not really going to give spoilers on this so much because it's kind of hard to do that. If I wanted to really do spoilers and do it justice, I would have to go episode by episode, and I'm not prepared to do that for any show. So this is more of like an overall spoiler-free how I feel about the show, a few points about it, so you can get an opinion of if you want to watch it or not. But I would recommend it. So, uh, yeah... Matt Barry is in this. That's one of the biggest things that hit me immediately is, oh my gosh, Matt Barry, which I didn't know him by name. I saw him and I was just like, it's it's that guy. It's it's the guy who's the second boss in the show The IT Crowd. So if people are fans of The IT Crowd, I know it's one of those shows that people don't really talk about, but then if someone brings it up, then a bunch of other people usually jump in and are like, oh yeah, The IT Crowd, I love that show. So it's like kind of those like under the surface big hit shows. So anyway, uh, Matt Berry plays the second boss who shows up in that, and he's hilarious, and he's hilarious in this as Laszlo. Um, so I just thought that was funny. I saw him, I was like, oh my gosh, I haven't seen him in anything other than the IT crowd. And he's eh, kind of the same character in a sense, but it works. One of, one of my big criticisms of this, and it bothers me every time I watch an episode, it's very minor, but it always bothers me, is the intro music during the beginning credits feels like it doesn't match it really feels like it doesn't match the show i don't like the song either and i just wish they would have changed it at least for the second season maybe they'll change it for the third i don't know but i don't like that song i don't think it matches it needs to go like i said it's a minor thing but it bothers me for some reason if you've seen the movie you're going to be very very familiar with the show i mean it it kind of restarts where the movie started in a sense, but with different characters. So it's kind of like if the movie never happened. It's it's not like taking the movie really and picking up after that ended and then going forward. It's more of if the movie never happened, kind of taking the original concept and remaking it in a sense. Um, oddly enough, I think the show is actually better than the movie which I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that you still have Taika Waititi and Jermaine Clement involved in it heavily, and their comedy, their influence is all over that thing, and it's just a, a situation where they were only able to do so much with the movie because it was you know less than two hours long versus a TV show where they can put in hours and hours and hours and really flesh out characters, put a lot more jokes into it, have more running jokes, and they do a lot of that. That's one of the great things about it. Uh, they really make you care about the characters. They develop them. They give. They keep getting into aspects of the backstories of these characters, which I th I kind of assumed at some point. Like, what are they gonna do? You know, like I I I just felt like I went through a bunch of episodes and I was just like, okay, this is good. This is feeling fresh. This is funny. This is fun. 
And then I'm like, how are they going to keep this up? Because it seems like a shtick type thing. You know, you can only play this so much of like these old timey vampires trying to make it in um, a modern world and, you know, be vampires but not be found out and kind of blend in a little bit and be a little bit sympathetic to people but not too much because that's their food source. But it just, it stays fresh. And that's one of the crazy things to me. The writing is so good and the acting is so good. Uh, it, it stays fresh, and it, and it blows my mind that through two seasons, it's still super fresh. Uh, there are a few episodes that are a little less exciting than other ones, but I, I didn't see a single episode where I was like, oh, that wasn't a good one. They're all good or great, so it's pretty impressive in my opinion. But that's part of the reason, too, I'm a little bit concerned about Jermaine Clement leaving, because I don't know to what degree he was driving things in the writing room. So, we'll see. Uh, it has a lot of dry comedy moments to it. I mean, if you've seen What We Do in the Shadows, the movie, it's that. You know, it's a lot of dry comedy, but it works really well. It 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 is very heavily inspired by vampire comedy, which you would assume, once again, that, you know, that's going to get tired, that's going to get old, but it just doesn't. They just keep somehow making it fresh and part of the reason part of the reason it stays fresh is like i was saying they keep giving new aspects of the characters like they keep revealing things about their past they keep revealing things about their interests their hobbies you know all these things and um it works it works really well and then when they kind of get past some of that when they get a little bit bored they introduce other characters they introduce other types of beings just gonna leave it there not gonna say too much so yeah uh, and they're still using the mockumentary style, like in the movie, and it works really well. The The mockumentary style is always great. And they do address the actual cameramen at times, which it's a little weird when they do that, but it also works. I don't know. It's not that big of a deal. They added an energy vampire to this, which I was very happy about. And if anyone's seen the show Better Call Saul, uh, the guy who plays the energy vampire in it is, was in Better Call Saul as the guy who was dealing prescription drugs who bought the big Hummer, flashy Hummer. Um, you'll know what I mean if you've seen it, but uh, guy's hilarious. And he, it works really well. The aspect of adding in that more modern vampire, the energy vampire, opens up a lot more possibilities. And he's potentially my favorite character. I actually think he is. It's between him and Guillermo. And Guillermo is actually who they really focus a lot on in the show. He's the familiar for the one vampire nandor um so they kind of look at everything mainly through his eyes because he's up night and day basically so they can kind of cover a lot more plus it's more interesting from his perspective because he interacts with everyone and he doesn't just interact within the house he goes out and goes into society and you know and the cool thing too is he, his character, I think, kind of develops the most. He has the most actual story going on. And I think that's probably why they set it up as him kind of being the focal point in the very beginning in the first season. And he, it works great. He's an awesome character. So he's actually one of my favorites, Guillermo. And then also Colin Robinson, who's the energy vampire. Which, there's just a lot of interesting, funny things about that one. Um... How they portray the modernization of the old vampires is really, really good, and how they kind of try and struggle with this, like, keeping to their old ways and keeping to vampire tradition and old tradition, yet also trying to be, like, newer and hipper and more connected with society. There are a lot of jokes that kind of revolve around, you know, the past and the present clashing, and it's... Once again, it's one of those things that you would think, oh, well, this is going to get old, but it just doesn't. They, they keep coming up with fresh ways to present the same types of jokes, and it, it's just good. Uh, there's some really excellent cameos in this, by the way, specifically the Vampire Council. And that's all I'm going to say about that. When you get to the episode with the introduction of the Vampire Council, oh my gosh, the cameos. Amazing. Uh, I also wrote down, if you're introduced, and you should assume this because this is kind of how shows work in general, if you're introduced to a random character, most likely they're going to die. Although, it's kind of more like that in the first season, but in the second season they got away from that. There were a lot, of, uh, a lot more random characters that show up who don't die in the second season, so it then becomes more of like a, you're, you're less sure. Where in the first 
first season you're kind of like oh random person they're gonna die oh random person they're gonna die or just something bad's gonna happen to them in the second season it establishes more as like oh a random character could die could become more of a screen time character or could live and come back another time and that's another thing is they circle back to things a decent amount so it, it's i mean it's smart writing and it's really good because they'll have something happen and then a bunch of episodes later they kind of circle back to that happening in another way um so there's a lot of interconnectedness it's it's definitely a show that you shouldn't just be like oh i'll catch an episode here or there no all the way through chronological order which most people watch shows that way, but I know some people who don't. I know people who are literally like, oh, if this one just happens to be on, I'll just watch it. Uh, it doesn't matter what ones I catch. This show really benefits a lot from watching the whole thing in, in order. Um, it's pretty surprising they have so many jokes to play with. It stays fresh. Yes, I basically already said that. Uh, they do a good job of continually revealing more aspects of the character, especially Guillermo. Guillermo's story arc is very, very interesting. Not just fun, but interesting. And you'll see why. Uh, the finale of season two was pretty crazy. Uh, I'm surprised it was that crazy. And it really set it up well for another season. Um, that's another thing. They have good kind of like ending points for all their episodes. So I really like the way that's done. And then my last thing, as I said, sadly, Jermaine Clement, like I said, I don't know. He might still be producing and involved in some way, but he's not going to be in the writer's room at least. So anyway, uh, really like the show, really highly um, endorse it. It's not endorse it, recommend it, sorry. I just got done working today, so I'm kind of a little bit drained. No, I highly recommend it, unless you're one of those people who, you know, you don't really particularly like vampire stuff, or you don't like drier comedy. I can see that not being your thing. Or you don't like mockumentary style, but I think they do a really good job of keeping it fun, fresh, and funny and interesting and i love 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 the show um it's not perfect or anything and there are kind of moments where it kind of lulls a little bit but uh rating with five stars possible four stars in play i'm gonna give it a very very solid four stars i was kind of between four and four and a half but i think four feels right i'm gonna give it a very solid four stars it's a good show definitely check it out but thanks everyone for checking this out. Do me a quick favor though, hit that subscribe button. That's your best way to repay me for any of the videos. If you even like one video I've done, that's a good way to repay me is hit that subscribe. It literally takes you a second, totally painless, and it means a lot to me. Uh, if you've already subscribed, make sure you hit that thumbs up just to say, hey, I'm still watching, good job. Uh, and then if you're gonna subscribe now, if you've already subscribed, make sure you hit the notification bell and that will let you know anytime I put up a new video, but also when I'm doing my live streams because I'm doing that bi-weekly uh, every other Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we're focusing on individual films at that point. And actually now we're starting to do two films at a time. So we'll do a more serious talk and then we'll talk about one more fun like light movie. So. But anyway, put some comments down here. Let's talk about this or other horror stuff. But thanks regardless for taking your time and watching this. And until next time, keep it brutal.